Hello friends, those back pages here. I hope you're well. Tonight we're going to talk about Topps packaging. Not necessarily the box, but the packs within. Something I've uh, recently started uh, collecting for the first time. We'll get to that in a minute. But I just wanted to go over a brief very very brief history of Tops packaging because from 52 1952 when they started making actual baseball cards not 51 the game but 52 talking about baseball and through 1989 right the packaging for the most part there were a couple years there in the 80s that had pictures of the cards inside explain i don't know if i'm explaining that properly but i don't count those because it's the same exact picture of a card that's in the packs so it's not unique you know that i think it was the 1980 tops box has a bunch of in-game action photos which is nice but not really what i'm going for here but for the most part, the packaging was pretty plain. I'm guessing a lot of the, you know, the box, even the box and the packs themselves, the wax packs themselves were pretty plain. You know, it was, I would say it's probably a cost thing. You didn't have to pay anyone or get permission to use anyone's image. So they just ran a generic. You know, in the 80s, it was, it was a baseball. I mean, if, if you collected back then, it was just, a, you know, had tops on it, and you know what I'm talking about. And that's pretty much from, from 80, from, yeah, from 80, with the blue, with the baseball on it, Henderson rookie, all the way through 89, 90, yes, 91, they changed it up a little bit, and then in 92 is when they introduced the, uh, cellophane packs not cellos but actual cellophane for the regular in 92 they removed the gum and removed what we knew is the wax pack itself and <clears throat> i've done a little bit of research here so i'm going to be doing some reading because i didn't memorize all of this stuff but in 1990 you had card images on the box plain pack 91, same thing. In 90, and also in 1990 and 91, they did make traded packs, but there were no, you know, no, no fan, no players on the packaging in those two years. In 92, same thing, different box, you know, the box tops with different players on them, but no uh, players on the on the wax packs, and there was no traded for. Basically, and there was one series in 92. And then in 93, they had two series. Again, generic packaging, card boxes on the box, different card boxes itself. No traded wax that year. 94, same thing. 95, card images on the box. And that was when they brought back traded. They made a 1995 Tops traded wax box without the with the cellophane packs and actually that is the first to the best of my knowledge that is the first pack that had player image on it distinguishable and actually named and it was Ray Durham not a very popular release but you know there's a nice trivia question he was the first and then in 96 is when everything really started to change 96 Series 1 and 96 Series 2 both had Gwyn and Puckett on the box and Gwyn and Puckett separately on the pack. So if you're a Gwyn collector, there's a Gwyn pack, Puckett, it's same thing. There was no 96 tops traded at all. 97 had Barry Bonds and Willie Mays on the box for both Series 1 and Series 2 and there was no update. No traded, sorry, rookies and traded it used to be called. 98, 
the box series one and series two same had Juan Gon, Juan Gonzalez and Clemente on the box now, I wasn't able to find an image of the series one packs but I found an image of the series two packs and it had both Juan Gon and Clemente on it there was no rookie and traded that year so I'm guessing that the series one packs also have you know Clemente and Juan Gon on the packaging In 1999, we had, had Nolan Ryan and Roger Clemens on both Series 1 and Series 2. There was no rookie in traded that year. Wax. And I was only able to find an image of the Series 2. And that was had Clemens on it, not Ryan. Ryan was only on the box and not on the pack on Series 2. Said. I'm going to venture to guess to say the Series 1 is the same. 2000. <clears throat> so we start this century. 2000. Series 1 and Series 2. Same. It had Hank Aaron and Mark McGuire. In series 1, Series 2. McGuire was the only player pictured on the packs within the box. So Aaron wasn't on the packs, but he was on the box. And there was no rookie in trading. 2001 <clears throat> is when it gets interesting again. <laughs> 2001 Series 1 box had Piazza, Maguire, and Nomar on it. Packs inside were all generic, no player. Series 2, Pudge, Bonds, and Chipper on the box. All the packs inside, unfortunately, generic, no player image. Then they brought back the rookie and traded wax in 2001 and put Eatra on the box. Fantastic. But unfortunately, the packs themselves were generic. So there's no, you, you can search 2001 tops traded back and they're just generic tops logo, some writing on it. No. Unfortunately, they didn't put each on the pack, so I don't know why, but it is what it is. You're going to see a pattern here. <coughs> Excuse me. 2002, Series 1 box. Maguire, Bonds, Pedro. Series 2 box. Clemens, Pujols, A-Rod. Up the rookie and traded box. Cliff Floyd, Nolan, <laughs> Scott Rowan, and Gary Sheffield. Again, for all three series. The packs inside were generic. No player featured. 2003. Gets even worse. 2003 for Series 1 and Series 2. Even the box is generic. No player on the box. No player on the package. 2003 Rookie and Traded. Had Jeff Kent, Irod, and Tomei on the box. But nobody on the package. No one on the packs. All generic. 2004. Series 1 and Series 2, generic box. Working traded, A-Rod, Nomar, and Clemens. All the packs in all three series, generic. So, unfortunately, nothing the player collects there. Now, from 2005 to 2008, so 5, 6, 7, and 8, the packs inside the box matched the player featured on the box, player or players featured on the box. So 2005, Series 1 is A-Rod, Series 2 is Bonds. The, they began calling it Highlights and Updates in this year. So it's Highlights and Updates. It was Guerrero, Derek Lee, and Pools on the rookie entry, the Highlights and Updates. 2006 box. Is when they brought back Mickey Mantle after retiring his number after his death. Series 1, Bonds Mantle. Series 2, Mantle A Rod. Highlights and updates Pools, David Wright, and Ortiz. Again, the packs inside feature all the same, same players. 2007, Series 1, Howard, Ryan Howard. Series 2, David Ortiz. Highlights and updates Clemens. Again, inside packs, all the same. 2008, Series 1, Manny. Series 2, Pools. 
highlights and traded Joe <laughs> Hamilton, Joba, and Utley. Inside, packs all the same. 2009 is when it gets a little weird because they did something that they didn't do the previous four years and they haven't done since. And that's, you know, of every release from 2010 to now is, is been the player on the box is exactly the same as the player on the packaging. No, no variation whatsoever. So that, you know, is good and bad, I guess, at the same time because, you know, you know easier to collect it that way. But anyway, 2009 is a little tricky. Series 1, he rubs on the box. Series 2, Ryan Howard's on the box. Rookie and Traded, or I'm sorry, Update, Highlights and Update, is uh, the freak, Tim Lincecum. Now here's where it gets tricky. The Series 1 box from 2009 with A-Rod on the box, there's four different packs inside. There's an A-Rod pack, a Ryan Howard pack, a Babe Ruth pack, and a Ted Williams pack. And they're exclusive. Those four combination are exclusive to the Series 1 box. The Series 2 box has a Jackie Robinson pack, a, another Ryan Howard pack, a Mickey Mantle pack, and a David Wright pack. So those four packs are only in Series 2. The Update packs. You had Lincecum, Ryan Howard again, <laughs> Ty Cobb, and Lou Gehrig. So 2009 is a wild time if, if you're collecting packs for specific players. 2010, Pool Series 1, Pedroia Series 2, Lingoria Update. Packs all the same. From now on, the packs are going to be all the same inside. 2011, Cano, Maurer, and then Jeter, Pujols, and Nitro, the three of them, 2011 update. 2012, Roy Holiday, Pujols, Series 2, Ryan Harper, Ryan, <laughs> Bryce Harper, like you see here, in the update. And that's generic 2003, by the way. I just put those there for, so you're not looking at a black screen. The 2013 Prince Fielder, Trout, and then the update packaging had all of these guys on it. Darvish, Harvey, Machado, Miggy Cabrera, Trout, and Harper. 2014, Series 1 Trout, Series 2 Kershaw, update Tanaka. 15, Puig, Series 1, Posey, Series 2, Chris Bryant, update, update. <coughs> 16, Harper, Trout, Ortiz. 17, Chris Bryant, Kershaw, and Judge. 2018, Trout, Harper, Otani. 19, Judge, Ruth together. Aaron, Trout together. And then Koufax and Kershaw together. 2020, Series 1, Alonzo. Series 2, Trout, Update, Harper. Then 21, Soto, Tatis, Acuna, 22, Otani, Vlad, and then Scherzer and Alonzo, an update. 23, J-Rod, Judge, Trout, and then this year is Acuna, Soto, and then the um, Yamamoto, and uh, the Cubs pitcher, I always forget his name, he's going to, those two will be on update. That should be out next month. So, that's your brief little pack slash box slash pack history. It's very interesting that that they never and I wonder why this is and I'm guessing part of it is I don't know if it's legal reasons or spite because we know tops can be very spiteful that Griffey was never featured ever playing days post career ever featured on a tops flag quote unquote flagship packaging box or pack 
Now, I got this in, <clears throat> and this is, you know, I got in a couple of graded packs. Oh, why are you buying graded packs? Blah, blah, blah. Because I want to. Because I think it's cool. Because I think it's a good snapshot. And it's a lot cheaper than buying a box. And I really don't want to buy a loose pack. These, these slabs are very well made. They're very thick. But uh, this one, 2011, Hobby Pack, which is known for the trout. But what's interesting to me is that this is the only time on the box, the box, and the, the wrapper are the same. This is the only time Jeter appeared on a uh, flagship packaging. He appeared many times on Topps Chrome, many times on Stadium Club, Finest. But this is his one and only appearance on uh, Topps. Which is strange to me. Now, this is Itro's only pack appearance. Now, he was on the 2001 update box, working traded box, but the packaging was generic. So, unfortunately, this wound up being his only Tops <coughs> Tops wrapper appearance. Now, Pools has been on a bunch, and. You know, the first one was 2005 with uh, Vlad Sr. and uh, and Derek Lee. I think it was, yeah, I think it was Derek Lee, 2005. His first solo one by himself was 2008 Series 2. And then you get more complicated when you get, you know, the Series 2 wrapper color is different than the retail color. You know, for this, I think I'd like to stick to the hobby pack. So I don't think they'll grade the jumbo packs or the home team advantage, as they used to be called. I don't think they'll grade those due to the uh, the slab the slab size. Um, See, so yeah, I got this in, and I got in a 2017 update pack. Judge. This one happens to be a ten. Just worked out that way. The uh, this one was a nine. This one just happens to be a ten because it was the only one available. And then I got in a 2018 hobby update pack in an eight, in grade eight. Obviously, that's a fantastic photo. Otani featured on all the packaging. It's, it's a nice picture of Judge featured on all the packaging. And uh, those are the three I own so far. I mean, they're not, these three weren't difficult to obtain, just to pay for them. But the, the 2011, I wanted an auction, so that, that kind of uh, started the whole thing, really. <laughs> Gave me the idea. Like, originally, I was only going to get the 2011 because it's a 2011 bag, update bag. Trout, and it does have Jeter and Pools and Ichiro on it. And then I started reading up on it, and I obviously I remembered these, and I had forgotten about these and learned about the others I told you guys about. And uh, they're not uh, they're not readily available, and it's not they're not rare. I don't you know I don't like when people say oh it's low pop it's rare. It's more of a case of it's low pop because people don't care. At least yet, anyway. And that might never change. You know, I, I, I like to think outside the box when I'm collecting. You know, I like to take some chances. Like, it is what it is, right? It's collecting. It's fun. But what I, I think I'm going to have to wind up doing is, is uh, grading some of these. Like, I'd like to get Pujols' first pack, 2005. Highlights and up, updating highlights. Highlights and updates, and then he's on series. His solo one is 2008 series two. Now, here's the thing: I could probably go and I've I've looked a little bit on eBay, not not a deep dive search, but those packs are probably like five bucks each. Buy a loose pack. The the, the thing is, you don't know what it's going to be like when it arrives. They could take that loose pack and throw it in a loose in a bubble mailer and just on its way through the mail system so <clears throat> I'm thinking that I might depending on how things go I, maybe buy a box and then try to pick out the best pack you know 
especially when it comes to 2009 with all the, you know, essentially, you know, six, nine different players and Howard's, Ryan Howard's in each series, but, you know, you spread it out, it's pretty interesting. I mean, it's, you know, I asked JT a little bit about pack grading. He guesstimates it's about $30, $40 a pack to get, you know, $30, $40 a pack to get graded. It takes forever. It's very low on the priority, like slow boat low. It is what it is. It would just be something that, you know, would be cool to have. Again, it, it's cool to have. It's not necessary. It's it's not, you know, again, it's cool to have. It's something different. It's a little different to collect. I mean, these, these you know, they, they look nice in these slabs. You know, this is one of the newer. They've changed the... Uh, They've changed the slab, interior slab, a couple of times. Some of the other ones don't look very good. Like, they'll fold over this, the lip, the top lip. You can see here there's a, I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but there's an indentation, like, holding it in place. You can kind of see it there. Like a little rectangle right there. So it's holding it nicely in place. I mean, I've seen other slab, PSA slabs where this top part is folded over to the back. So it's kind of just, it's not very attractive. It's cheaper than this one, probably $10, $15 cheaper. But it just, it was enough to annoy me to not, you know, not to have them looking uniformity. You know, just, you know, you can put them up on a shelf and uh, have them on display. You can show them to your friends. I just think it's something cool that's a little, a little uh, outside the box, a little unique, I suppose. So I just wanted to, in closing, I just wanted to say thank you for tuning in. I, I, I realize that you know everyone's time is short, and only everyone only has so much time, and there's just so much. How do I say this in the hobby lately? In our at least in the YouTube community, there's a lot of noise going on. There's a lot of seemingly people that are making content that don't have your best interest in heart or in mind. And uh, I, I'm not going to get into that negative stuff right now. <laughs>